What up, man? You know what it is, man. Your boy, Trendsetter Sense. Of course, Chosen Journey. Got a special, special, special guest, man. This dude right here, man. Uh, lyrical, man. Uh, his melodic flow, his beats. Uh, I'm really excited to have this dude, man. Indie Tribe in the building. Yes, sir. Uh, album out right now. Just Tore dropped. Out. This, yo, you got a lot going on, bro. Hey, man. You got a lot going on. None other than no big deal in the building, man. It's a pleasure to have you, bro. Oh, thank you for having me, man. For real. For real, man. Yes, sir. Yes. Um, you're in the city. You are current. You have a show. Yes. In town. Talk about it. What's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah. I'm supporting uh Forrest Frank tonight at the Coca-Cola Roxy sold out show. Mm. Um, first time I'm playing some new tracks from my really? album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, which album? Uh, the people we became. Yeah, you okay, got yeah, which yeah. album? There's yeah, yeah. Of, uh, going on the right people now. we became. My solo album. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, people yeah, yeah. we became. Yeah. So, so we gonna get yeah. a little uh, Renaissance. Yes, sir. We gonna get a little Leave It to God. Yes, sir. Okay. Hey, he's tapped in. <laughs> yes, he's tapped sir. in. Okay. Yeah. Um, exactly. Talk about it, man. Um, yeah. You got the. You doing the show tonight? But this is Forrest Frank's. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This okay. is the Child of God tour. Child of God tour. Yeah. And then you got. Your tour, people. We be, the people we became tour. Okay, yeah. talk about it, man. Because I saw that it's a national. It is, bro. This is the the biggest tour I've done. The most cities I've ever done. Um, the people we became tour with John Keith mm. and Akleso. Shout out both my guys. Mm. Um, yeah, we're doing like twenty five cities, every region of the of the United States. So, um, got one in Toronto too. So, wow. um, yeah, man. Wow, I'm excited. Wow, how many cities is it? I, I think it's like 25, 24, Ooh. 25, something like that. Ooh. Yeah, that's what I love, man. Um, the evolution, you know. Um, you got this tour coming, but you also you and your business partner, mm -hmm. uh, Chelsea. Shout out Chelsea. Yes, yes. Um, director Chelsea, Chelsea. Yes, director Indy Chelsea. Chelsea. Yes, y'all y'all yeah. have a uh, y'all y'all own tour, correct? Yeah, yeah. Your, uh, your own festival. festival. Yeah, festival, yeah, yeah, festival, yeah. The Holy uh -huh. Smoke Festival. Holy Smoke Fest. Yes, Tell sir. Tell me the, the 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 evolution of that, man, because that's catching. Yeah, crazy, man. Crazy. Um, yeah, this is our fourth year, um, second year in Nashville. Um, and yeah, uh, this year we've already sold more tickets than we've ever sold before. Wow. Um, it's next week. Uh, so August 9th and 10th. Um, yeah, man. Artists owned and operated. Wow. Uh, completely ground up. Like, um, yeah, man. How do you balance that, man? Um, you know, being on the creative side, but then also the business side of putting yeah. it together. like is, is that a is that a big weight on your shoulders yeah it's i mean it, it can get kind of tough because you know like the creative side of you like i'm a big dreamer like i have really big ideas um a creative risk taker you yeah. know because i think that's how you um you kind of jump off the porch and come up with stuff like this um but then you have to have a lot of execution a lot of organization a lot of follow through and that's where mm. chelsea comes in mm, on that she's yeah she's a director of operations um you know me and the guys uh indie tribe we all own and operate the festival together wow um but we are all yeah we're we all lean to that creative side yeah. so where we have the big ideas and the big dreams a lot of stuff would not connect you know, uh, it, it wouldn't actually come to fruition mm. without Chelsea. She is really the backbone of the execution and the operating side of the Wow, she's the festival. brains. Of the yeah, operation. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, we would we would be we would be in trouble. Like it'd be, it would be a complete it would be a completely different experience. Like so we make something shake, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, but it would it would. I, I the fans also appreciate her a lot. You okay. know what I mean? Because they that's. Uh, that's kind of the part that's actually missing from a lot of festivals. Like we mm. we um, came up like going to festivals like right. you know Rolling Loud, like right, right, Bonnaroo, right. Coachella, stuff yeah. like that. Even those big ones, I think we have a competitive advantage even on those huge ones because the fan experience um, it, at some of those festivals is is really bad. Like as mm. far as like you know, what I mean logistics, like ticketing, like organization, uh, safety. You know, water security. Wow. Um, you know what I mean. Um, medical. Wow. That that type of stuff. Yeah, yeah, the small um, insurance. Details. You know what wow. I mean. Like, um, having enough food like present for everybody. Uh, those type of things. Um, they're really lacking at a lot of festivals, mm. and we get a lot of feedback from our fans. Like, man, this is such an enjoyable experience. Um, 
on that side of things, mm. you know, because at the end of the day, it really is about the fans' experience. Yeah. It's not about, especially with what we do. You know what I mean? Of course, we we are artists um, owned and operated and led, so we want to take care of our artists really well. Crazy. Um, but also, the fans are why we're why we're here. Right. So they can't get the short end of the stick. Right. You know what I mean? We can't be flying in all these people and, and, and all this stuff, and then the fans get the short end of the stick. Right, you know, right. We got to take care of them. And so, yeah. Man, um, Holy Smoke Tour, no big deals in the building. Shout out Michael V. I didn't even know you, you were coming, bro. Like, he's playing low key right now. He's in the <laughs> background. You know what I'm saying? We're going to get you too, bro. Yeah. By the way. I can never walk in a room with Michael without him knowing at least one person in the room. Wow. He's the connector. He's the plug. <laughs> Wow, in Indie Tribe, man, talk about the evolution of Indie Tribe. Yeah, man. So uh, Indie Tribe, like at the very beginning, was this idea that I had with some friends in in college at MTSU, um, that in order to break through the noise as creatives, instead of competing against each other, um, we needed to cooperate and kind of pool our resources mm. and kind of um, give all like share the platform among everybody and kind of like, you know, like all ships rise type thing, you mm. know, instead of, Oh, I'm trying to get on. So I'm gonna charge you this for this. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then you're trying to get on. So, it, you know, it, so it was a collective originally of um, a bunch of different disciplines of art. So you had graphic designers, you had videographers, okay. you know, you had musicians and instead of everybody trying to crab crab in a bucket, it was like, Let's all like okay. You got graphic design, okay. I got the song, I got the beat. You know what I mean? Um, and let's all do this together, type thing. And so it was kind of like a, a movement in college, and then that just kind of birthed into, you know, ten years later, um, the group that you see mm. now, Indie Tribe as a group. It's mm. it kind of took the principle of that and applied it to a rap collective. Okay. And so yeah, that's crazy, bro. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Um, yeah. speaking of Indie Tribe. Indy 500. Yes, sir. That just dropped, right? I mean, it just dropped. <laughs> Literally. Like, it just dropped. Yes, sir. Talk it, about it. It dropped yesterday. Uh, or, or, well, last night at midnight. Um, Yeah, Indy 500 is the newest EP from uh, Indy Tribe. Uh, It was it was a surprise drop. Yeah. Um, You know, we got the festival next week, and Ooh. it's like, that's that's the Indy Tribe festival, so we wanted to give the fans Crazy. New, new music. Yeah. Um, and I think dropping it on them like that is just gonna make the crowd like wow. They're already going nuts online. Yeah, like yeah, yeah. uh we we surprised dropped it last night and it was like top ten on Apple, mm. like mm. going crazy, mm. you know. What's um, the song that has gotten the most feedback? Uh man, people people are like running the project back to back. Yeah. I will say that like the most common thing I'm seeing is that our uh Mowgli the Iceberg, one uh -huh. of the members yeah, of Indie yeah, Tribe, yeah, yeah. like he has like his the standout verses of his career on on this project, um, but I think that I think mandatory on uh, on the project is gonna be the one that like okay. kind of goes up. All yeah. right. So for those yeah. that don't know, can you let everybody know all the members of Indie Tribe? Yeah. So uh, it's me, Mowgli the Iceberg, DJ Michael V, John Keith, and Tori Deshawn. Mm. Yeah. So cool. Tori Deshawn is the newest member. Okay. And so this is the first project that like highlights him he's a producer a singer a rapper and he really shines on this project so mm, yeah. love it yeah you know we support him crazy yeah yeah um he's he's low-key low-key the best rapper alive i'm not gonna <laughs> lie I, I, hey that, that's a big statement from hey, low-key low-key he's the best rapper well, you alive heard it right, right here no yeah. big deal said it yeah <laughs> talk about man the rise of hip-hop the chh yeah yeah christian hip -hop. talk yeah. about it man yeah, man, I you know, I've been around it for a long time because I started out um like being an intern for Derek Minor and Reflection Music Group. Mm -hmm. And I was on the business side, so I was doing their merch, mm. road managing for them. Yeah, I saw that. You know, yep. um and so I kind of saw that era and now on an artist as an artist on this side, I've seen how it's developed and I honestly think it's like in the best place that it's ever been as far as creativity. Wow. And artistry, yeah. I think people are really majoring on excellence in their gifts, mm. um, 
And yeah, I just think we have the this era. I'm very excited to to hear the music coming out and even just the ideas like festivals popping up like Holy Smoke and um, Glow Fest mm-hmm. and Siervos and mm-hmm. um, and just seeing everybody. Everybody has their own sound now. They're not yeah. all just trying to be, you know, one sound or be like somebody else, right, you know. Right, right. Um, and so and I think we're seeing a response to that from the public. Mm. Like we're we're having people who are independent, aren't even signed, aren't right. even co-signed, and they're able to build like huge followings and right. sell out tours. Right, right, right. Um, you know, without without biting somebody else's sound or whatever. And uh so yeah, I love where where it's at right now. Um, you know, you're talking about, you know, the the, the, the numbers that you guys yeah. are doing and this is all independent. Independent. Like yeah, like, like but like real independent though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause there's there's like you know, there's there's obviously there's like industry plant independent, yeah, yeah. quote unquote independent. Funny, yeah. And then there there's a legitimate independence, but you're signed to like an independent label, right? Yeah, yeah. Which that that really is independent, obviously. Yeah. But you're still you still kind of got like a bank behind you if it's if it's a gotcha. successful uh independent label, yeah. which is fire. Um, but like indie tribe and me, like I'm talking about indie. I'm talking about me and Chels are uploading the songs. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like that's crazy. Bro. All of that. Like that's we're crazy. funding it ourselves. We don't get any funding from. Wow. I mean, just the fans, obviously. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. buying the stuff, coming to shows. Um. So, everything that you see is completely independently. Wow. Yeah. I saw a post. You know, speaking of it being independent, like you talked about, like the numbers that y'all were yeah. doing, man. Like, what does that mean to you, man? I think the reason it means so much to me is, like I said, it's just like it's instant feedback from the fans. You know what I mean? It's not like somebody, it's not like an angel investor saying like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm betting the house on this artist, which is, again, there's nothing wrong with that. That's fire. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? People who get that, you've earned that through what you've built. But this is just us putting it out and the fans saying like, now we're behind this. Mm. We need this. Mm. This music is changing our lives. Mm. This is how God has spoke to me through this. Mm. This is the, this is, um, you know, one of my favorite things from my album was, um, I, there's a song on there called Didn't Cry um, about a friend that I lost and like how how the grief from that was like very nonlinear and, 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 I, and I, I, it was hard. It took years for me to like actually grieve it, you know? And somebody reached out to me and said, like, I haven't been able to grieve, like, the death of my family member wow. since it's happened. And that song, like, helped me actually, like, go through that experience with God. Wow. You know what I mean? So, like, those type of things, I feel very, it's, the numbers to me are not just numbers. It's representative mm-hmm. of the people that this music reaches. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um that's why it's, it's special to me. It's not just because I, I just want to be on. Yeah. It's because I like I'm putting my heart into this music. I'm praying over it that mm. it will actually help people. Mm. And so when I see those numbers, I'm like, this is God getting this music to people. Wow. You know what I mean? Do you feel like, man, like diving into your album, um, and you know, you said something that was like that stuck out. You were talking about like you felt like the message it touches people and um can you talk about like how you feel like do you feel like you're a vessel to provide mm. a message for people yeah like i do like i gotta speaking through you i do i absolutely do and i don't think that that's unique to me mm. i think we all are yes, yes i think there are specific things that god wants to get out into the world and specific messages that God wants to get out into the world that only you can get out. Mm. I can't get your messages out and you can't get mine out. Wow. I think that God speaks to people through people. Mm. He's done that since the beginning of time. It's, it's, it's how he works. And so, yes, I think there are very specific things that, and messages and, and, and people who receive it that are for me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Um, and the same for everybody listening to this. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, yeah. What does faith mean to you? Faith. Um, I think that faith is walking today in the reality of what you hope for Mm -hmm. and what you believe to be true. Mm -hmm. Um, I've actually been like, I've been, I I just got through Hebrews and, and I was like, I don't know. It just clicked for me this time going through Hebrews that it's like, when it talks about faith being like 
the the proof of what is unseen, like what you hope for. And when the Bible says like hope for, it means like a sure expectation, like you know this is going to happen. So mm. we know that forever we'll be with God um, without sin, without um, all, all the negativity and pain and hurt um, that we experience now. We know that one day we'll be without that with God. Mm. And so li- living in that reality right now, how does how does that affect my generosity? How does that affect my love for people? Mm. When I know that I can I can't lose any opportunity. Like everything that is supposed to come to me will come to me even if it's not in this life, right? Mm. There's no there's nothing I can really lose. And so that allows me to live with open hands, mm. you know, and be generous and share and lay my life down wow. for other people, wow. you know? So I, th- I think that's, that's what faith means living today in the reality of what you know is to come. Mm. Is there a scripture that no big deal, like that's something that really resonates with you? Is it? One yeah. That w- w- well, right now it's, um, it's Hebrews 13, I think, um, five and six, um, where it says, keep your, uh, keep your life free from the love of money. Um, because he himself has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. Mm. Therefore we may boldly say the Lord is my helper. What can man do to me? I won't, Oh, I won't be afraid. What can man do to me? Wow. So I mean, and that's kind of just what I, what I was just talking about, you know, is, um, he has said he will never leave us or abandon us. The Lord himself has called us, has called himself our helper. So there's nothing to be afraid of. Mm. And we can say, what can man do to me? Like, mm. God is with me. Right. You know, so, yeah. Can you tell me the inspiration, like diving into your album, like behind, like my favorite song? Well, I got a couple. Yeah, what, yeah, yeah. I, I want to know this, actually. Renaissance. Yes, sir. Can I can I get the inspiration behind that? That's that's probably my favorite uh okay. too. I'm gonna try to have the and whole the video, crowd man. Singing that. Wow. Yeah, yeah, shout out a uh, studio, uh Johnny Clay and Britton. Uh they shot that that music video. But man, Renaissance, it was sparked from this idea that uh not just Christian hip hop, but I feel like Christian art in general right now is in a an amazing place, a more creative place than it's been in a long time. I feel like the church is valuing art again Mm -hmm. like we did for millennia so i think it's only been like the last hundred years that kind of the western church has been like uh art is kind of like we don't really rock with that Mm -hmm. you know what i mean but it's like if you go back to the early church through like for real like through like 1900 like christians were leading in um architecture and like mm. renaissance art like gotcha. it, like in, like like in all in music yeah. you know like yeah. Bach and like gotcha. like kind of just like leading and all and even in innovation and, and in car- and like the invention of the hospitals like all of that like we were leading in that you mm-hmm. know what I mean and it feels like we took a break from that but I feel like we're getting back to that now like mm-hmm. movies TV music um even stuff like this mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying mm-hmm. like uh and like actually valuing this, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And so Renaissance was like, that's what sparked the idea. And then like the the group vocals in it are like, you know, we won't sell our soul for the pay today because it's like, you don't have to do, you don't have to water down the message. You don't have to um, kind of like hide what your faith is. Like um, you actually, you doing it more excellently is going to make room for you in mm. those spaces. You mm. know, like I just did on the radar. You yeah, know what I, I mean? Yeah. I just did on the yeah. radar, yeah. and I'm rapping about Jesus. Mm-hmm. That's I, crazy. I went in there. They ju- they had just had Big Sean. I come in there. They give me the <laughs> same respect because they they rock with the gift. The gift made room for me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then I, I go in there, and I don't fumble by, like, kind of, oh, let me hide it. Let me water it down. Like, no, I'm going to do it full tilt. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and yeah. and it, actually, it actually was the most watched one since uh, – it was the most watched one in, like, weeks. You right. know what I'm saying? Because I think – that it was interesting. People were like, oh, I don't hear people talking about right. this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So Renaissance is like about being like, about being bold in your gifts and excellent in your gifts. Mm. You know? So normally like at the end of my interviews, man, I ask my guests like, 
in 60 seconds, yeah. can they break down like a salvation for like people that may not understand? Mm, yeah. You know? So in the articulate words of my brother, <laughs> no big deal. I know you can break it down. Yeah. Um, man, salvation is, um, I like to think of it as God, uh, bringing us into his family, you know, um, uh, which is, that's the original design is, um, God and man walking together with no barrier between us with, um, no breaking relationship. The reason that we need to be saved is because our, our sin or us saying no to the only true good being in or outside of actually the universe. But saying no to ultimate good is automatically evil. Mm. <laughs> if you have ultimate good and you say, no, I'm going to do something else, that's evil. Mm. And you're choosing actually to break that relationship. Because mm. ultimate good is saying, be with me. That's what the garden was. Mm. Let's, let's be in perfect peace, shalom, forever. Mm. You said, now nah, I'm going to do my own thing. You've broken this relationship now. Mm. So, and, and the thing is, no matter how many times, that's what the Old Testament is, no matter how many times God is showing us, come back, come back to that relationship. We're like, now nah, we're going to do our own thing to the point where we couldn't even, none of us wanted to fix that relationship. Jesus makes a way for the relationship to be fixed through his death and his resurrection. Mm. So he takes the hostility on himself in his body and resurrects. He puts that righteousness on us now we have right relationship back with the father through him through faith mm. so that we're not trying to work our way back to that jesus already did that we just put our faith in him and we we have that right relationship with god and we're back in that family and then we bring other people into the family wow that's that's how i would say it. wow no big deal man let them know man album tours yes sir festival yeah just let man let them know everything man. yeah uh solo album the people we became out now and uh oh yeah oh yeah 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 that's right um yeah so solo album the people we became out now indie tribe ep called indie 500 just dropped last night holy smoke festival um august 9th and 10th next week and it, it also happens every year in nashville so tap into that and then my solo tour, The People We Became, uh, this fall, I'll be at Center Stage in Atlanta on October 6th. Come through ATL. I'm trying to see y'all. Let's pack it out. Let's sell it out. Crazy, man. Hey, yeah. brother. Thank you, bro. Appreciate you so much, man. man. Thank you. We got we got a lot of work to do. I'm excited. Yes, sir. Um, we got to have you at the festival next year. I'm there. Yeah, yeah. I'm Let's there, do it. Man. I love everything, man. Indy 500. Your solo project, your tour, everything, man. No big deal. Trends of the sense. It's chosen journey. Yes, sir.